taken time to come out to find out more about um, your bond dollars at work regarding the recent bond issue that was approved by the City Commission back in September. If you haven't been to City Hall lately, you probably wouldn't recognize the place if you go by. I mean, there are, I think, almost a thousand units being constructed right now. Um, rental, and I don't know if there's townhouses. I do know it's apartments and townhomes being developed all around City Hall, and it's exciting to see development coming back to Myanmar. Um, in addition, our police headquarters has basically been without a home since 2005, when Wilma hit our community, and our headquarters sustained severe damage to the point where we had to vacate the facility. And we've been renting in the Miramar Park of Commerce all of that time. Uh, without um, our police department has done a great job in providing public safety to the community in less than ideal um, facilities being its home. And it's time for our, our police department to be adequately housed so that we can optimize and maximize public safety in the city. In addition to as you'll hear, um, and one of the projects with Fire Station 107, which, is, which will fill a huge gap in emergency response in the area between Monarch Lakes, Vizcaya, Silver Falls, and around City Hall, that community has experienced less than ideal response times. But we know as it relates to responding to 911 calls, that could be a matter of life and death. You know, if, if ourselves or one of our loved ones, if we are calling 911 to have our emergency response to arrive, we want them to get there the minute we hang up. And not having a physical presence to fill that gap not only jeopardizes public safety, but it could be one of our relatives and neighbors not making it because we have to travel too far to respond. Um, so without further ado, I'll get into uh, the presentation, and I'll begin the presentation talking about not just the projects that will be coming to our communities, but looking at what it means from an economic development standpoint. When you're spending $60 million, there are a lot of procurement contract opportunities that are available. And many of us who are here are um, self-employed, own businesses, hire the employed uh, residents in the community, and we contribute to the economic impact in the economy here in Myanmar. And if you are not doing business with the city of Myanmar, you really need to revisit that thought process because to pull off $60 million of spending, that is not just construction dollars, it's professional services, it's professional services in design and engineering, construction services, as well as other services that those service providers will need to be able to pull off the jobs that they have to do. Um, there's infrastructure work that's coming, so um, and we'll have a future event in the spring of 2014 to tie in. Um, every year I do a how to do business with the city of Myanmar, and this year's event will tie directly into the bond issue so that your company can get involved in the process. And to get involved in the process, the first thing you have to do, sign up as a vendor. When you sign up as a vendor, that is the, that is the first step you have to do to be informed about the projects. And signing up um, as a vendor is very simple. If you go to our um, city's website, there's information under purchasing on how to um, sign up. Now, the city uses a service called Demand Star. Demand Star is an online service that matches vendors with procurement opportunities. You go on Demand Star, you can sign up for free. Um, obviously, Demand Star does offer premium services so that you can be notified um, on projects for multiple agencies, including cities universities or whoever is using their services, and you will basically sign up, put in your procurement, um, your commodity code, I'm not sure if they use NAICS or, um, I think NAICS is, is, a, is a standard they use, so when you sign up as a vendor, for example, if you provide 
bookkeeping services, construction, engineering, whatever. I mean, the city buys everything from widgets to paper to catering services. Whenever the city is looking for a vendor, procurement advertises out through Demand Star. It either sends it out as a formal bid invitation or a request for quotation or a request for uh, or a request for a proposal or qualifications. Demand Star, based on your profile, will send out the solicitation that matches up with your with your business. And the reason why that is important is because over 90% of Broward businesses are small businesses. That's the economic engine in Broward County. And it's no different in Miramar. Most of the businesses in Miramar are small businesses. Our small businesses hire our neighbors. So when our businesses are working, our neighbors are working. Mortgages are being paid, so our, our, our neighbors next door, homes are vacant because they're employed by companies right here in the city of Myanmar. And what better way to develop economic development in the city is by recirculating our tax dollars within our city limits. So whenever we can do that, we try to do that. And one of the opportunities the city has approved uh, when I was elected a couple of years ago, the first initiative I pushed was to revamp our procurement code, which at the time did not recognize small minority disadvantaged businesses. The city did have a small local preference for businesses in the city that uh, responded to bid opportunities that they received, but it wasn't very aggressive. But our new procurement code that was passed by the commission back in 2011 now makes an advantage, makes it advantageous for our local businesses or minority and small businesses to pursue work with the city. To the tune of having up to 10% bid discount if you are both a minority or disadvantaged veteran-owned business and you also hold a Broward County CBE certification. The CBE certification is a County Business Enterprise, which is a race and gender neutral program in the county. The city of Miramar does not certify firms as a small business, but we do accept the designation from Broward County, which has an outstanding uh, Office of Economic and Small Business Development Department that assists small businesses. So, What's really sweet about the local, the local preference is that if your business is located in Miramar, you're considered local. Well, let's say you own a business and your business is in Miami, or West Palm, or Deerfield. The fact that you are a Miramar resident, your business qualifies as a local Miramar business because you're bringing the money back home. Your profits, you're bringing back home. So I think that should be, I don't know if any other agency actually does that. But I think that that is something that our residents need to know more about, especially the ones who own businesses. So help me spread the word out that if you're not doing business with the city, you need to be doing business with the city. Um, since Chief Williams or um, Black is not here, I'll try and take a stab of some of the highlights of the public safety projects that's included with the bond uh, program. On the historic side of town, which is the east side of Myanmar, there is um, a planned police substation. As many of you know, Myanmar is a very linear city. I guess from north to south, it's not that large. It's not a great distance. But can you imagine our police department logistically responding to instances across the entire city? Well, we have a west police substation, which is right here. And we have our kind of mobile police headquarters until we get the new headquarters built um, right off of Red Road and Miramar Parkway. But on the east side, outside of our patrol officers that cover the area, there isn't a facility that the residents can go to or where um, our police officers can go in to do reports. I mean, they basically work, their office is their patrol cars. So we're, we're going to be building a police substation 
where the community can go in to handle whatever public safety services they have to have attended to as well as our, just to have a physical presence so that our neighbors to the east feel like they have a place and actually have a place that they can turn to. But this project is budgeted just under $3 million and two and a half of the 2.8 is coming from the bond. Uh, the estimated construction start date is August 2015. And, and you'll see certain start and projected end dates just to give you a sense of uh, some of the timetable. You may ask, well, why is something starting back in 2015, 2016, or late 2014? If you can just put yourself as far as being on the staff side of the city as administration, to do a project, a project has a, has a cycle it has to go through. First of all, the project has to be programmed. Well, what do we need? What exactly do we need? So that has to be defined. Once that's defined, it has to go to a design team to design it. But before you can go to a design team, you have to go through an entire procurement process to select the design team. And once the design team does its work, then now you have to procure a contractor to come buy it. So as you can imagine, you're talking two, maybe three months if not longer, depending on the size of the project, the timetable it would take to get a project depending on the size. So our neighbors to the east will be having a public uh, police substation to address some of the um, public safety needs. And as you know, as far as the city of Miramar, relatively speaking, is a very safe community. But we're not immune to crime. And there is crime that happens in Miramar. And in certain areas of the community, especially in the southeast portion of the, of, the, of the city, there's some hot spots that's there. This substation will definitely go a long way in addressing some of those hot spots because they may be there, but they'll come out here to the west and to central areas to commit their crimes and go back. So we definitely, um, it's definitely needed and will go a long way and improving our safety. Uh, another project in historic Myanmar is a lighting project at Fairway Park. Uh, you may not necessarily be familiar with this park, uh, but it's a very nice neighborhood park. And I encourage uh, residents who, are, uh, who live on the west side, who may not necessarily venture out to the east, there are some nice facilities and nice parks out there. And I would um, encourage you to go on a weekend out to visit some of these um, locations. Shirley Bronco Memorial Park, uh, there's a community band shell that's being uh, uh, proposed. Uh, in, the, in the media, it's, it's been labeled as an amphitheater, but it's actually a band shell. And it's a formal structure where festivals, um, small concerts for um, that community can take place. And there'll be some improvements to uh, the grading, the lighting, fencing, the marquee sign. I think there'll be some uh, renovations for um, the restroom facility. Um, the police department um, will be having a storage facility to house some of our specialty vehicles. I would imagine the SWAT mobiles and some of um, uh, the other specialty um, equipment um, that the police department needs. And it's a 7,200 square feet facility to store those special um, vehicles for the police department. Our crime scene investigation facility. Um, Actually, Miramar has one of the best crime scene facilities, you know, based on the size, and basically it's, it's, it's too small. It needs to be expanded. Um, I toured that facility, and when I say the place is basically like a hospital, it's that clean, it's that orderly, you know, except the portion where they keep the narcotics. But other than that, it's, <laughs> it's, a, it's, 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 it's amazing to see what our police department does um, with its facilities. Monarch Lakes Park. Monarch Lakes Park is a vacant property just off of 136th Avenue by Coconut Palm Elementary School. I think uh, many of you may uh, be familiar uh, with uh, Coconut <coughs> Palm and 136. 136 is the main street that runs through uh, Monarch Lakes. Like many of the planned communities in Miramar, Developers were required to pay the city impact, park impact fees. 
And Monarch Lake was not an exception, along with some other communities, like all of our communities, paid park impact fees, which is basically a, it goes into a pot of money where those funds are used to build, construct, maintain, um, develop park projects within the city. Monarch Lakes is set, that site is set dormant since the construction of Monarch, the development of Monarch Lakes, as well as some of the other parks in the community. And um, this bond will finally bring home Monarch Lakes, its park. You may ask, well, well, why wasn't the park developed? Well, the, a lot of the, well, fifth, a lot of the money was used on the park impact fees to complete the development of Regional Park. When Miramar uh, was granted or given the, the Regional Park, it was originally a county park. So the county gave the park to the city of Miramar along with $15 million, but the actual cost to finish building Regional Park was $30 million. So the city of Miramar had to use a lot of the park impact fees to build regional park. And as a result, many of the parks like Monarch Park, uh, Monarch Lakes Park, Vizcaya Park, which was recently built, um, where it was another uh, one of those parks. Um, across the street from Sunset Lakes Elementary, Harbor Lakes has a passive park. It's about a half an acre piece of property that's there has been, been vacant. The city just had, hadn't had the funding to build it. So, um, so the, the, the desire of the commission at the time was to build regional park. So with this bond, we're able to finally complete and revisit some of these parks um, that many of our neighbors have been waiting years and have purchased um, homes in communities with the expectation to move into a community having you know, a park where they can go and, and have recreational activities. Miramar Community Cultural Amphitheater. This facility will be built as a five and a quarter million dollar budgeted project of which $4.35 million will be used from the bond. The amphitheater is going to be a game changer for the city of Miramar as it relates to bringing cultural and uh, music and theatrical performances to the city of Myanmar. As you already know, the regional park is home to many concerts and uh, our annual 4th of July event is there. Um, so regional park is accustomed to having productions and performances. When they've come in the past, the promoters have to bring in a mobile stage and other apparatus to make those events possible. With the construction of the amphitheater, we now have a dedicated space and facility and structure that has already garnered demand from the world's largest producers like Live Nation and others who bring on some of the top acts um, to already begin to inquire about when it's completed, what you know, amenities that they would need to be able to bring artists from your top, you know, R&B artists, jazz, blues, country, you name it, this facility will be able to host it. The capacity is um, actually from three, three to 5,000. In fact, this illustration here, this rendering here, um, actually is really incomplete because right now, as designed now, this area here with the fixed city seating, is actually going to be covered. So now that even increases the availability for events, whether it's during the day or in the evening, or if there's um, inclement weather, meaning rain, promoters will be happy to have events here because regardless of weather, regardless of time of year, that the facility will be able to accommodate attendees comfortably. And that is uh, one of the great um, amenities to this project that they are very excited about. Now, this project has garnered a lot of interest in the community. 
because when we do have major events that region apart, we have had issues as it relates to traffic and, and, um, and even in some case, even uh, some noise. To address that, we had our staff hire consultants to look at, well, how do we address the issue? It was an issue that was brought out in other town hall meetings leading up to the to the uh, town to the to the bond issue, and you know we really took into account the residents' concerns. So to address the traffic, we had a traffic study done. We had traffic engineers take a look at the site, and in fact, um, I think in another illustration you'll see that the ticket booths are moved further inside of the property itself, where the stacking of traffic will be able to hold, I think, about 250, 240, 240 cars, which now takes cars off of Miramar Parkway, or more cars off of Miramar Parkway. And because of the incorporation of that um, traffic engineering, this uh, Miramar Parkway will retain its current, um, its current traffic levels of traffic. Now, to say that you won't have maybe 15 or 20 cars that may back out, I don't think it's immune to that. But the point is that we listened to the concerns, we made adjustments on the site uh, to increase the stacking within the property itself so that our passageway would be free on Miramar Parkway. Another exciting project at Regional Park is the, the, will be the renovation or expansion of the corporate pavilion and, and converting it to what will be known as the Miramar Regional Park Corporate Conference Facility and Administration Building. Currently right now, for a Regional Park, our administrative staff works out of trailers. There's not a fixed structure other than the trailer that they work out of, so it'll give a home to to the staff at Regional Park, but it will also incorporate corporate meeting space, which could be used for banquets, parties. For a city like Miramar, which many people don't know, has more Fortune 500 companies than any city in South Florida. There is no major meeting room capacity space within the city of Miramar, or even close by. Many companies have to go to Signature Grand or go to one of the coastal cities that have large hotels that have the ballrooms and the banquet halls to have big corporate meetings or to have any function that will hold a capacity of over 500 people. This will have the capacity of 700. So we have a lot of companies that service Latin America and even domestically here within the United States they have multiple branches, their headquarters are here, but they can't even have a corporate meeting in Miramar. They have to go to their other cities to have these meetings because we don't have the facilities to accommodate them. So what this does is for the residents, if you want to have a family reunion, have a wedding reception, and if you want to invite all six generations of your family that, <laughs> that ends up being 700 people as guests at your event, we will have the capacity. For the city, this is an economic opportunity for the city because obviously we'll be leasing the facilities and that can help offset our operational costs here with the cities. For our corporate residents, they now can entertain having their corporate meetings here and other functions here. And when you tie the corporate facility with the development of the amphitheater, now you're talking potentially festivals, a lot of incorporations of different events. And, and the, the other thing I forgot to mention with the amphitheater, it gives me peace of mind that my teenagers who potentially would go to a concert, that I could just drop them off and know that they're only five minutes away from the house versus them asking daddy to go to a concert at Bayside, downtown Miami, or downtown Fort Lauderdale or the bb &T Center, they're right down the street from the house. And the location, you know, it's just, you just couldn't ask for a better, a better situation. 
Harbor Lakes, that's the passive park I just talked about right across from Sunset Lakes Elementary. This is north, this is south, Sunset Lakes Elementary. This area here will have a nice passive park. And um, I will be reaching out to Harbor Lakes Park, I think, uh, because this hasn't even been designed yet. So this is the opportunity for the community to give some input, to say, you know what? Um, I would like to see this particular amenity here. I would like to be able, I would, um, if we could put some, you know, some fixed structures so that I can exercise or make sure we have some benches. So if a mom is with her child in a scroller, wants to sit down and read her Kindle or read a book, you know, that make sure that, you know, that the, um, that the park is going to have the amenities that the residents will use. And, and, and I think this is the perfect opportunity. So. Uh, to provide that input so that when staff is working to talk about well, what type of park could we make this, you know, they have some insight on what the residents would like to see there. And, um, and that can be incorporated into the programming. And then we can let our consultants, design teams, come up with uh, bringing those, those ideas to life. And here's, a, here's a, some elevations of the, the new police headquarters. If you know the parking garage right across from City Hall, um, in fact, you know the 24-hour fitness. Do you know that that structure is a parking garage? Many people don't know that structure is actually a parking garage. 24-hour fitness, um, the office space, the retail, uh, the first floor retail space, and there's actually even um, a residential component to that building. It wraps around a parking garage. That is what the police headquarters will do in addition to a residential development. The police headquarters, I think it's 60,000 square, 65,000 square feet. So it's uh, obviously it would be a hardened structure where um, all of our police uh, operations will be headquartered from. So now it will complete the circle as it relates to um, police presence on the west here with the west substation headquarters at City Hall and the substation on the, in our historic side of town. And this is a brief history about, um, I alluded to earlier, October 2005, those of us who were here, remember Wilma when it came through, some of our, I mean Broward County, much of Broward County I think was out of power for probably an average of three to four weeks. In a lot of instances, police um, department basically leased its space since 2006 for seven years. Uh, I think that's a typo, 250. I think it was, it was, we were paying about 400 a year. Right, at least it grew to 400,000 a year. So can you imagine a lease of $400,000 a year for seven years? Okay, that's, uh, that's some significant dollars. So as you see, the bond not only um, give the police headquarters a home, but when you transfer the lease payments back into the bond payments, it just makes sense to own opposed to renting. So, as you can see, uh, uh, just across the board, it just makes so much more sense. And right now, our facility, we don't have booking facilities at our place where we're, we're, we're leasing. It has to be taken to the county, correct, or other cooperating facilities that will allow us to book uh, suspects. 65,000 square foot police space, 14,000 of uh, commercial retail space on the first floor, and uh, obviously the building will be hurricane-rated building housing the city's emergency operations center. All administrative functions, criminal investigation uh, division, and. Uh, and booking and temporary holding facilities for those uh, crime offenders that have been apprehended. Several years ago, we recognized that we had a big hole in the city. We built to the east and then we built to the west. Um, but in the middle, we never, never had a fire station. So station 107, which is in what we call Midtown Miramar, in the middle of Miramar, uh, is going to be built just east of Flamingo Road. Uh, on Miramar Parkway. Right now, we have a temporary facility going in there now. If you can see it, you can drive by. It's two side-by-side, -side, double-wide trailers. And um, that's where we'll operate out of. And that particular space, we put the trailers on the space 
so that we can build the permanent building when it's time. Um, that building is supposed to be built um, in 2016. It'll take about a year to build. Um, so one of the problems that we recognized, and if, if you may remember that um, last year we were able to lower our insurance rating citywide from a five to a three. Well, in this particular area, this is the only area in the city where it's actually a 10 because we can't get to, we're, we're five driving miles farther away from the nearest fire station in certain areas of, of District 107, which is in the middle of the city. So Station 107 will actually address this problem and, and fix that and get those residents down to a three where they're supposed to be. Uh, this area currently runs about 1,400 calls, uh, and we, we're currently running um, the station now um, with an engine company. Um, we hired, yeah. Uh, so here, here's the problem, you should, as you can see, we built to the east, we built to the west, and that red circle in the middle is, is the problem area that we have right now. You can see we really didn't have coverage. The circles indicate about a mile and a half perimeter around the closest fire station, which is the little red helmets. All right, so as I said, the station will be, be built about a half mile east of uh, Flamingo Road on Miramar Parkway. It's going to be a LEED certified, which is leadership and environmental engineering design. Uh, so it'll be a green building, as green as we can make it, uh, and still be fiscally responsible. Um, it's going to be about 14,000 square feet. It'll be a four bay station, uh, four apparatus bay, so there'll be four fire trucks to be able to park in there. Now, we won't be running four trucks out of there, but it gives us adequate storage. Uh, for the fire trucks um, when they're not in service and when we put additional units in service during uh, hurricanes, we have a place, a safe place to keep them uh, and the firefighters while, you know, while we're waiting for the storm to pass. Um, you may also be aware that we, last year or this year we received a grant to hire 12 firefighters from the federal government. We had a really nice ceremony last month. Um, we, we trained them all. We came out here um, and, um, and gave them all their badges and, and they're now working in there that those personnel are, are being used to staff the current engine company that's, that's running in District 107. Uh, right now, they're running out of our logistics facility, which is across the street. Um, but when we get the temporary facility open, they'll be able to, uh, to work out of there. The economic impact of building the building and hiring the firefighters is about 9.36 million, which is a pretty significant impact uh, for a particular area. So this is a picture, of, you know, an artist rendering of the station. As you can see, it's going to look pretty much exactly like Station 70, which is the station on Miramar Parkway, just west of uh, Douglas Road. And again, it's four bays. It's got a little bit of a strange way to get in and out of it, but it'll be a very nice station when it's built. Uh, some of the features that this station will have, and all of our stations do have, is it has a vehicle exhaust uh, system. So what happens when the fire trucks go into the station, they're, they're diesel engines and they're, they're spewing out soot and exhaust. So what we have is we have these tubes that go on the exhaust system to draw that, that soot out of the building so the firefighters don't have to breathe it and it doesn't go into the fire station where they, you know, they breathe it for you know, long careers, 30 year careers. Uh, the other thing that the uh, station will have is a, a gear cleaning area. So they have special machines that when we come out of the fire, there's you know, cyanide and all kinds of other things that are on the gear. So it allows us to clean that gear and not be exposed to it later on when you put it back on for the next fire. 